Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to another episode of News Dose, where I give you all of the latest gaming news. And here recently we've been getting a lot of remakes. Of course, Final Fantasy VII came back, though that's probably more of a reimagining, but we also got Resident Evil 3, Spongebob Rehydrated, Destroy All Humans, Trials of Mana, and Demon Souls. Well, there's some speculation that we might be getting another big remake soon, and if so, fans are going to be thrilled. Also, is PlayStation gearing up to make a quote-unquote Xbox Game Pass competitor? This might actually be happening, so stick around for that. As always though, we got a lot of stuff to talk about today, so let's get right into it starting off with another game delay. Yeah, 2020 is doing 2020 things. We've of course had a ton of game delays over the year, and the Xbox exclusive Crossfire X is the next big game to get delayed. Now this shouldn't come as any kind of surprise just because this is something that keeps happening this year and honestly, it's understandable. The work conditions have not been great and there is a bit of a learning curve for a lot of these companies. With that said, I do understand it's very disappointing. Crossfire X is a highly anticipated game for multiple reasons. For starters, the single player component is actually being developed by Remedy Entertainment. Now that's pretty exciting because they're masters of single player experiences. I think in back-to-back -back generations, they ended up developing one of the generation's best single-player games. On the Xbox 360, you had Alan Wake, which was just absolutely fantastic, and then last generation, you had Control. Now, Control did have some technical issues on base consoles, but overall it was still a great game nonetheless. So a lot of fans are looking forward to Crossfire X for that reason alone. Even then, the multiplayer looks good, and Crossfire is actually a really popular game over in places like South Korea and China. From my understanding, it has more than 1 billion players registered. Yeah, that is massive. Still, we do need to see how other parts of the world react to it, and hopefully, it turns out to be a good game. If you're looking for a good, fun multiplayer game to play though, this could be it. I think at the very least, it has a lot of potential. We'll have to wait and see about that, of course, but we're going to have to wait just a little bit longer as it's now being planned for an undefined 2021 release. Also, Yakuza Like a Dragon has been out for just over a week, and it's a great game. It's really my go-to game on the Xbox Series X as of this moment. It's not going to be quite as popular as something like Assassin's Creed Valhalla, but this is an excellent game, especially if you want a good story. Either way, even though this game just released in the West with a complete English dub for the first time, it sounds like the developers are already preparing to let fans know what's next for the Yakuza franchise. There will be a Yakuza event set on December 8th, which is the 15th anniversary for Yakuza. What's interesting though, is that they said that they will have some announcements for future development for the series. Now, I really like Yakuza, so I'm pretty excited about this, but I think a few things could end up being revealed here. Sure, they could end up talking about Yakuza 8, and that would be great and all, but I think something that could happen is that they could talk about porting Yakuza 3, 4, 5, and 6 to other platforms. Right now, these are only available on PlayStation, but as we've been seeing over the last couple years, Sega has been bringing these over to the PC and on Xbox within just the last 12 months. Sega has been trying to be more multi-platform here recently, and we've seen them be very buddy-buddy with Xbox. I mean, even Yakuza Like a Dragon released as a next-generation timed exclusive for the Xbox Series X. So I think we could end up hearing about some ports at this event, and that would be a very welcome addition on both Xbox as well as the PC. Hopefully it happens, but I'm definitely going to keep an eye out for this event on December 8th. Next up, fans were really freaking out yesterday regarding Doom Eternal. So GameStop was apparently calling up customers yesterday who had pre-ordered Doom Eternal on the Switch and was notifying them that it had been cancelled. Yeah, customers were very concerned about that, especially after Bethesda did such a good job porting the first game over to the Switch. Well, the good news is that Doom Eternal hasn't actually been cancelled for the Switch. Instead, it looks like only the physical version was cancelled. They are still planning to bring it over to Nintendo digitally. So if you were one of those people who got called yesterday, don't worry. Doom Eternal is still coming to the Switch. The question now is when will it be available? A lot of people were expecting a 2020 release and... Well, that still might happen. In a statement made yesterday, they did say that Doom Eternal is still 100% on track for an imminent digital release. So there it is. This is very possibly going to get a stealth release in November or December. And again, based off the first game, I expect this to be a very well-made port, and for that matter, it's just a great game. If you haven't played it already, hopefully you'll like it on your Nintendo Switch. 
Let's talk about Demon's Souls though. If you picked up the PlayStation 5 or if you're planning on doing so, there's a very good chance that this might be one of the first games you end up playing. It's a great game too. There's not a lot of games that can grab me quite the way Demon's Souls has, but this is by far one of the best launch games that I've ever played. And honestly, I don't think I've ever enjoyed a launch game as much as I have with Demon's Souls. The thing about the Soulsborne genre though, is that they're very challenging. And for people like me who wants a challenge, that's great. Now that's just who I am as a person though. I like to challenge myself because that's how you get better at something. You have to fail in order to get better, and that's with everything in life. So as long as a game's fair, I want to be challenged. Not everybody's that way though, and there's been a debate for years and years that Soulsborne games should have an easy mode. This would make the game more accessible to those who aren't maybe as good at games or have less time to devote towards them. Well, for those people, they got very close for this to happen as Bluepoint Games did consider adding an easy mode to Demon's Souls. They ended up deciding against that because they didn't want to go against the intent of the original creators and didn't want to mess with the overall balance of the game. And I think that they made the right decision here, but I will ask you, how do you feel about having an easy mode in games like this? Do you think that they made the right decision by staying faithful to the original creators, or do you think that they should have added it in anyways? Staying on topic of Demon's Souls though, there's been a lot of talk about easter eggs. Of course we talked about the door the other day that wasn't in the original, and everybody's trying to figure out what's beyond that door. Well as of this video, nobody's figured that out, but Bluepoint seems to have added another very strange easter egg. So check this out, there's apparently a surprising noise in Demon's Souls that also wasn't in the original, and fans are trying to figure out what exactly is this blaring sound. Well, right now, some fans believe the noise being heard is Metal Gear Rex from Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, now that would be very interesting because what do we know about Bluepoint Games? They specialize at remaking games, and right now they might be the best at it in the entire industry. So this could be a sign that they're working on Metal Gear Solid. Yeah, that would be huge. The thing is, this isn't the first time a rumor like this has popped up. In fact, earlier this year, there was a leak that suggested Konami was bringing back Metal Gear Solid and Silent Hills. And then you also have tweets coming in from Bluepoint, and it almost seems like they've been teasing a Metal Gear remake in some of their riddles, so this isn't the first rumor that this was going to happen. And honestly, I really can't think of a better game to get remade. I know I talk about Banjo 1 and 2 getting remade all the time, and hopefully that does end up happening. I'm not really going to give up on that just yet, but Metal Gear Solid would be an obvious choice. Now that Hideo Kojima has moved on, it's hard to imagine this franchise without him. His footprint is all over those games, and plus it's kind of hard to trust Konami with anything right now. If they did announce a brand new original Metal Gear, I don't think fans would have a lot of confidence in them. However, if they remade Metal Gear Solid, you already have the story there, and then Bluepoint is extremely talented from what we've seen. This would be the most difficult thing that they've done though. The original Metal Gear Solid hasn't aged quite as well as games like Shadow of the Colossus and Demon's Souls, so there would be a lot more to do with Metal Gear, but we've seen games like Resident Evil 2 come back and make a much more modern experience, and I think if any studio could bring back Metal Gear Solid, it would be Bluepoint. With that said though, this is all just speculation as of this moment. There are multiple rumors pointing towards a remake, but we'll have to wait and see if it actually happens. I hope it does. This is one of my favorite franchises, but for right now, it's just speculation. I will leave a link to the sound below though, and go check that out and let me know if you think it sounds like Metal Gear Rex. On to our last topic though, PlayStation might be planning to make an Xbox Game Pass competitor. So PlayStation boss Jim Ryan in an interview was asked about how PlayStation could respond to Xbox Game Pass, and Jim Ryan's response was very curious. He didn't exactly say much, but he did say there's actually news to come, but just not today. So here he is implying that they are working on some kind of Xbox Game Pass competitor. Now that would be huge. What could it be though? Well, they already have PlayStation Now, and he did mention that right away. Well, yes, that was originally just a game streaming service. It did eventually add in local downloads, and they've improved its offering a little bit over the last year. It does get some bigger games in it every once in a while now, and again, they've improved it especially this last year. I still question PlayStation's commitment on doing something like Xbox Game Pass though. Could they improve PlayStation Now to be more competitive with Xbox Game Pass? I think yes, absolutely. What I question though, is what are they willing to do to compete? Well, if you look at Xbox Game Pass, what is it that makes it so enticing? Is it the quantity of games? No. 
PlayStation Now actually has a very large library of games. That's not the problem with PlayStation Now. Is it the quality? Yes and no. Again, PlayStation Now has some good games in it, but the thing that makes Xbox Game Pass so good is the amount of new games that they add. Not only do they include their first party games in it day one, but they also get day one third party games or at least games that had released recently. As an example, Call of the Sea will come to Xbox Game Pass day one in December. Then in January, you have the medium. This right here is a huge bonus of having Xbox Game Pass and you save money with those new releases alone. I mean, sure, they do add in some older games as well. The Witcher 3 is an Xbox Game Pass, but if you only release old games, what's the point? I mean, most people who wanted to play The Witcher 3 has likely already played it. That doesn't mean it's a bad addition, and on the contrary, it's actually a great addition, but you need to have a mix of both. So that's where I question PlayStation. Are they willing to add their first party games into PlayStation Now day one? So far, it doesn't appear that they're willing to do that. Even Jim Ryan himself implied they aren't willing to do that in the past. Now, maybe he's changed his mind, but even if you look at some of their recent releases, their big exclusive games that do come to PlayStation Now are for a very limited amount of time. They usually swap them in and out in like a three month period. In my opinion, they should just keep them in forever. Really, I think so far, their best answer to Xbox Game Pass is actually the PlayStation Collection. This is a limited amount of games that comes included with PlayStation Plus. Again though, these are older games, but I think what Sony could do is maybe combine PlayStation Plus with PlayStation Now, and then over time, add your first party games to the PlayStation Collection. Preferably not years later either. While they may not be willing to release their games day and date in a subscription service similar to Xbox Game Pass, they could try to do like 6 to 12 months later. By that time, they would have already sold millions of copies anyways, and then they could just cash in on their subscription services later on. I think that would be a good workaround and kind of the best of both worlds. Who knows though, Sony might come out and surprise us all. I'll definitely be interested in seeing what they have planned. It sounds like they have something up their sleeves, but what exactly is it? I'll look forward to whatever it is, but let me know what you think that they could do to compete with Xbox Game Pass. Anyways though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget to bell the notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.